You've fully recovered, Ernst? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. The hand? Kohler lifted his left hand and studied the black glove before wiggling his remaining fingers. It'll never be the same, sir, but it is better. Good, that's good. Oberfuhrer Adolf Hahn studied Kohler, who sat stiffly in front of him on an uncomfortable wooden chair, before looking down at the file on his desk and half turning a page. A minute passed before he spoke again, this time not bothering to look up. So you've totally healed? I think so, sir. How long have you been on restrictive duties now? Just over two months, sir. Hmm. Han returned to reading the file. Kohler silently puffed out his cheeks once he was sure his boss wasn't looking. He looked around the office, noting how bare it was compared to his own. No books, no pictures, no plants, no soft settee, no rugs, nothing. I, I don't understand. Han interrupted Kohler's sightseeing. Sir? Kohler whipped his eyes back to his boss. If you're fully fit, why are you asking to go back to Germany? Han removed his wire-frame glasses. Signalling he'd finished with his written request, Kohler had spent days composing. As I say in the report, sir, I feel, with respect, that I could do more for the Reich back in Germany. Mm. You do say that, but you don't say why, sir. You don't say why you'd be more useful in Germany than in London. If it was because you were no longer fit enough to do the job, well, I could understand that. But this... Han lifted his index finger and then rested it on the file as if it was a dagger jabbed into the tabletop. This doesn't tell me anything. I feel... You feel? Feelings don't come into it, Major. Tell me what you know. Kohler shifted on the chair and looked at the brown carpet for inspiration. There wasn't any there. I, I just thought, sir. What you know, Major, what you know? Kohler tried again. I, I know, sir, that I, I've been here a long time. Han nodded. I also know, Kohler continued, that my work has been to the highest standard. Without doubt. Han nodded again. And I think Han held up a hand for Kohler to stop speaking. Kohler obliged. That, Major, is the problem. You think. You don't know. You merely think. Thinking, feeling, wanting, none of that matters when you're a soldier. Knowing matters. Knowing is the key. I know I'm tired, sir. We're all tired. I know I miss my family, sir. Many men miss their families, Ernst. You still haven't told me why you're different. Han rested his finger on his temple, waiting for Kohler to continue. Kohler rocked slightly to the side and then shook his head, looking again at the carpet. I want to go home, sir. It's that simple. I need to go back to Germany. Can't do this job anymore. The last few months have shown me that I'm not the right person for the role I've been given. I can't do it. I'm finished. Han slowly shook his head. You have been ordered to do your job. The person who orders it, it is he who decides when a job is finished, not the person doing it. Cola kept looking at the brown carpet. Tiny lines in a weave made it look like the ploughed fields he'd seen far below when he'd flown out of Moscow all those years ago. Another lifetime. Han opened Kohler's life once more. He picked up a pencil and tapped it on the desk as he stared at the, fi the file. Your family are visiting you, are they not? Yes, sir. When did they go back? Han said it without looking up. Four days, sir. Kohler's mood lifted slightly along with his head. Han leaned back in the chair. He studied Kohler, who stared back, unsure of what was coming next. Your 
good child, yeah, Ernst. Your men will do anything for you. Your superiors speak highly of you and you run a tight ship. Your work with the Jews has been extremely efficient and it is to be commended. Han toyed with the pencil again. Your adventures last year with this uh, Rosset character, exposing those resistance cells was unconventional but effective. For that work, the Reich and the Fuhrer have been extremely grateful. You're getting goat cleaves, aren't you? Yes, sir. Good, good. They're well deserved. Han clasped his hands in front of him again, still holding the pencil. It stuck out the top like the plunger on a firing box. Thank you, sir. Han stared at Kohler without speaking for so long. Kohler found himself shifting in the chair. Um, um, am I dismissed, sir? Han leaned back from the desk, then tapped the pencil against the teeth before speaking again. You're not losing faith, are you, Ernst? Sir? In what we do and the people we do it for. Kohler stiffened and regretted writing the transfer request. No, sir, Han frowned. Germany calls us. The fatherland makes great demands. Demands that many find difficult to live up to. You've been tasked with an unpleasant job. A vital job, but unpleasant nonetheless. Han leaned forward again and lowered his voice. It would be understandable if your work with the Jews became a difficult cross to bear. No, pun intended. Han smiled thinly at his own joke. A record speaks for itself, sir. Records are history. It's the present I'm talking about. So I'll ask you again. Are you losing faith? 